What's up guys, it's boy Justin here with another graphic novel review. Today we're reviewing Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane, which collects Spider-Man comics from 1991 and an X-Force issue 4, which Todd McFarlane also worked on, I guess. So yeah, this collects, oh sorry, 1990 from 1991, my bad. This collects Spider-Man 1999, sorry, 1990 issues 1 through 14 and 16 and X-Force uh, issue 4 from 1991. Uh, issues 1 through 4 and 16 are written by Todd McFarlane with art by Todd McFarlane and X-Force issue 4 is written by, uh, sorry, art by Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I don't know how to pronounce that. So it's rated T for teen. Goes for 40 US, 50 Canadian. This was published in 20, sorry, 2022. So yeah, there, there's also uh, the Venom Epic Collection, which has uh, art by McFarlane. So when I got this, I thought this was uh, Mark, I thought this, sorry, this was Tom McFarlane's run. On uh, Spider-Man, turns out just like um, you know, some stories. Sorry, uh, stories written by Tom McFarlane, which this has. Uh, you know, issues one through five is Torment, which we already reviewed on the channel. I had like, I have the graphic novel premiere edition of that, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail on on uh, Torment. We we have issues six through seven is. Uh, a two-parter called Masks with uh, Ghost Rider and Perceptions 1 through 3 has Spider-Man teaming up with uh, Wolverine sorry issues oh sorry uh, which sorry it's issues 8 through uh, 12 and you have issues 13 through 14 which is Sub City which has uh, Spider-Man versus Morbius and then like 16 and uh, X-Force 4 is uh, the team up with X-Force. So lots of team ups in this omnibus. So I'll just briefly go through Torment. So Torment is about basically Spider-Man is, is uh, getting, you know, into, like, sorry, is getting hunted by the Lizard who has been resurrected by this uh, witch by this witch who was uh, lovers with uh, Craven, and Craven apparently killed himself, and she wants revenge on Spider-Man for you know ca maybe causing Craven's uh, you know untimely demise by his own hand. So yeah, lots, and I had to also like you know the lizards going around killing people. Yeah, I already reviewed this story. That's why I don't want to go too much into it, though. Uh, that was back when I did my reviews audio only with screenshots. So I probably didn't have a lot of screenshots. So you know, you get this way you get you get to see the art. It's pretty cool. Uh, my main problem with Torment is lots of action, but the dialogue and you know wasn't very good. It, th like this is a very quick read if you ever read it but yeah it's very bloody and there's lots of action and you could definitely this and masks you can definitely see uh, where like the the spawn where, where spawn would later be because there's like a scene where like you know Spider-Man is, is sleeping in uh is sleeping on garbage. So let's get to the, like the second, you know, story cuz you know, I'm, I I want to do this quick. But here here's the scene where he's sleeping in garbage by the way. Yeah. There's a craven which is a hallucination. Yeah, so that this the, this kind of also has kind of a weak ending this story, but I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, there's Torment. Uh, next is uh, Masks, which is a Hobgoblin story, where Hobgoblin's the villain. And Hobgoblin is like crazy in this, and he also has superpowers. 
And uh, this is like he's kidnapping people. And uh, he he thinks he's hearing them like, you know, uh, you know, mock his his uh, his very ugly, disgusting face. But it's all in his head. And he decides to kill them all except for the son of this lady who he decides to make his apprentice. And they're going to go out and kill evil. And this was a very uh, dark issue because you have like spider, sorry, Ghost Rider uh, is also wants to fight and kill um, Ghost, sorry, uh, what was his name? Hobgoblin. And this this starts off very dark where it's like Ghost Rider is like is you know is going to punish this guy who is a priest who has been making a certain kind of adult videos with orphans, street orphans, and yeah, uh, the very anti-Catholic because this guy's all might they they say that he's a priest, so it's like oh my god, they're giving us Catholics a hard time again. Uh, yeah, and this, this was very creepy, man. Like, very dark for what is supposed to be, like, uh, you know, because Spider-Man comics are supposed to be fun, and then you have this, and it's like, wow, super dark. And you could kind of tell with some of the dialogue, and, like, the way you call it, like, the, on the, on the, you know, covers, it says Arachnite that, you know, Tom McFarlane really wants to write Batman comics. Because the, the, these feel like more like Batman comics with Spider-Man shooting horn in than actual Spider-Man comics. Though, then again, I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan. So I could be wrong on that. But yeah, that's my opinion. And here you see the three, the four talking heads. But yeah, they're very... Uh, don't, doesn't this remind you of like, you know, of Spawn? Oh my god. So yeah, obviously, so yeah... Uh, also, you have drug use in this comic, so yeah, super dark. So yeah, what happens is uh, Spider-Man is going to go after Hobgoblin, and Ghost, R Ghost Rider wants to kill Hobgoblin, and Spider-Man's like, no, you can't just kill him, he's a sick man. And you could feel like, yeah, and, uh, you know, Spider-Man really doesn't, by the end of this story arc, and uh, the Wolverine story arc, really does not like, you know, uh heroes that kill but yeah th this was an awesome kind of you know story uh perceptions is probably my favorite story and it doesn't go where you think it it was going to go and by the way this this story is obviously inspired by twin peaks which they even mentioned Twi twin peaks where it takes place in british columbia where this female reporter uh, has a run-in with Windigo, who finds this dead body of this kid and takes it to the, you know, middle of the road and he gets hit by this female reporter who writes an article about uh, the, her run-in with Windigo, who ever they call uh, Bigfoot. And it causes this witch hunt for Bigfoot, Windigo, who... Everybody thinks he's going around killing the kids and there's a task force. And uh, hunters are going crazy going around killing animals by the truckloads. So Spider-Man, uh, get Spider -Man, uh, Peter Parker gets called in by his boss telling him he needs to go on an assignment with this reporter to, to cover the Bigfoot sightings. And this also this female reporter is also covering it. And then we get introduced to the police, and we get introduced to Wolverine, who is out to find, out to stop the hunters from, from killing all, all the animals, and is also trying to figure out who's actually, you know, trying who actually killed the kids. You know, he's on the the case on Bigfoot, so it's kind of this story is kind of anti-gun and anti-hunting, but you know, I'm kind of okay with it. It's not. You know, it's not too bad. And here you see have a scene where, like, you know, the comedic relief where uh, this guy's eating donuts with uh, ketchup, which is like, oh, my God. Then again, like, in another scene, Peter Parker's having donuts for lunch. You can't have donuts for lunch. Though the other day, 
I had like Doritos for dinner. <laughs> so I'm not one to talk, but you know what? I worked out after, so it's all good. So yeah, uh, we also get the thing where we find out that the hunters attack Windigo. There's a tracker that called Forp. And th th here's where the issue where we find out that, you know, that Windigo is not actually the killer. And that Windigo was trying to help. And that, you know, Spider-Man and Wolverine has to team up to stop people from going around killing uh, Windigo while Wolverine tracks down who the actual killer is. So, I I kind I was kind of a little disappointed because I was looking forward to the Wolverine and like you know uh, Spider-Man team up to take down Win Windigo, but you know this was probably the best story and it, it had unforeseen you know it had an unforeseen twist. Because do you think it's going to just be another fight comic? But no, but it was actually. There was a twist to it. But it gets super dark near the end. Oh my god. Because, you know, the, the actual killer, you know, you know, it was a creep. Let's just say that. So yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it. So next we have this story where somebody is going around kill, kidnapping homeless people. And Peter Parker's on the case. And he he dons his black costume, which which uh, Mary Jane doesn't like. And yeah, it turns out that you know it was Morbius that uh, was kidnapping uh, homeless men, and it was having his his gang of homeless men kidnap uh, homeless people so he can feed off their blood. But he but it turns out that he thought they were going around catching. Uh, bad people, and turns out his homeless people were just catching whoever, mostly other homeless people. So, yeah. So, Morbius doesn't like that. But, yeah, there's a nice fight. The art is pretty good. Uh, and here we have the X Force crossover, which is somebody decided let's have it reversed. And this was very hard to read. This is basically about how Spider-Man teams up with X-Force to take out Juggernaut and Black Tom. So you have like half the team is take, trying to take down Juggernaut. And this has art by Todd McFarlane. While the second story has art by, you know, uh, Rob Liefeld in X-Force 4, which is the continuation. And we're not going to go too much into that. Oh my god, I missed this. Because... Ah, uh, because I thought the, after that was all bonus material, and then th there's this thing. Oh my god. But yeah, lots of bonus material. There's a scene where Shatterstar stabs stabs out uh, Juggernaut's eye and gets it got censored. So yeah, I wasn't a fan of uh, this this crap because it's like this was this was very hard to read. But whatever. It was a cool crossover. But it was just action and not a lot of story. So what did I think about Spider-Man by Tom McFarlane? It's mostly rule of cool. But there are some there are some good stories here. Especially the perception story. Uh, but other than that, it's just rule of cool. A great art. But dialogue, you know, the Spider-Man dialogue is great. But everybody else's dialogue is not so great. Uh, the stories are kind of hit and miss, but overall, Perceptions was good. The action is good, lots of blood. Very dark for Spider-Man, but overall, this was good, a good, like, you know, story. Why, why was issue 15 missing? I, I'm a little butthurt that issue 15 was missing. Might as well, you give us the first 14 issues and 16, you might as well have given us, you know, issue 15 as well, but whatever. Uh, this is well worth the fifty dollar price point for me, in my opinion. This was like this is like like this is basically the size of an omnibus. And yeah, it's well worth it. So yeah, seven out of ten. Our ne next review is gonna be Rebel Moon issue one. Look forward to that piece.